One name that sends a chill down the spine of many still decades after the Second World War is that of Josef Kramer, the Beast of Belsen. Under the guise of World War II, the Nazis would commit horrendous atrocities and crimes against humanity against those who they deemed to be racially inferior and undesirable. This led to the Holocaust and the mass murder of 6 million innocent people. It was when the concentration camps were liberated during the latter days of the conflict that the true horrors of the Nazi regime would be uncovered, as with each concentration camp that was freed, a fresh and new horror would greet the liberators. One of these such camps was Bergen-Belsen, in which the conditions were truly like hell on earth. Today we look at the man who was responsible for this, and we look at the vengeful execution of Josef Kramer, the Beast of Belsen. Remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Josef Kramer was born and brought up in Munich inside a middle-class Roman Catholic family. His family would move to Augsburg, where Josef was schooled, and following his education he worked as an apprentice electrician in 1920. He would then later be mostly unemployed, after stints working in a department store and as an accountant. Kramer would join the Nazi party on the 1st of December 1931, and would then join the SS in 1932. During his strict SS training, he would work as a prison guard, and then when the Second World War broke out, would transfer to guarding concentration camps and inmates who were in prison there. He had been assigned as a guard at Dachau concentration camp in 1934, and during his time spent here, he would rise rapidly as he experienced promotion after promotion. He would then become a senior figure in the leadership of Sachsenhausen and also Mauthausen camps, and during this he would catch the attention of higher ranking Nazis. It was clear that within the concentration camp system, Josef Kramer found a home and a purpose for possibly one of the first times in his life. He would become the assistant to Rudolf Hess, the infamous commandant of Auschwitz, who would go on to oversee the mass murder of around one and a half million people inside Auschwitz. In 1940 Kramer was his number two, and he would accompany Hearst to inspect Auschwitz, and even helped with investigations as to whether the site would be suitable for a new oil and rubber plant, which at the time Germany was suffering from a shortage of. The goal would have been to use labour from the camp in this plant. Because of his work, Kramer would be given control of his own concentration camp, Natsweiler Struthov, in April 1941, which was established in the Alsace-Lorraine area of France. It was the only camp established within France by the Nazis. It was here in which Kramer would take part in many more crimes of the Holocaust. For example, he personally, as commandant, performed the gassings of 80 Jewish men and women who had been selected to be used in a Jewish skeleton collection, which was to be housed at the Reich University of Strasbourg. 46 of these inmates were Jews from Greece, and it wasn't just men who were killed, with women suffering Kramer's brutality too. Kramer would admit later during his trial that the purpose of the Natsweiler camp was to let prisoners work in the nearby quarry, and he would admit that he gassed these individuals on the orders of Heinrich Himmler. He would state how he forced the people himself into the gas chamber, and that women inside the chamber continued to breathe for around half a minute before succumbing to the gas. The Nazis would recognise Kramer's work within the system, and he was promoted to the rank of Hauptsturmführer or captain in 1942. He would then be transferred in May 1944 to become the camp commander in charge of operations at Auschwitz II Birkenau. This was the main extermination element within the complex of Auschwitz, and Kramer would oversee the deaths of dozens of thousands of people within the gas chambers of Auschwitz and the crematoria. He was brought to the camp to help manage the gassings of newly transported prisoners in May 1944, and he would later be deemed to have been responsible for the murders committed in Auschwitz. He would maintain that he would not take part in the selection processes, however this would later be proved otherwise, when witnesses would state how Kramer took an active role in the selection parades. In one example he would even load people onto the trucks, and he even beat them severely when they would oppose this and resist. Josef would claim that, I never took part in the selections, I asked myself is it really right about these persons who go to the gas chambers, I did not know what the purpose of the gas chamber was. Whilst he was at the camp, there was a revolt at Auschwitz on the 7th of October 1944, where inmates rose up to destroy the crematoria. Kramer would confirm that corporal punishment was allowed at Auschwitz, and how he administered torture around 40 times during his short stint there, 
and he would also confirm that guards were allowed dogs. During his trial and other defendants' trials, it would be alleged that dogs were used to be set upon the prisoners. During his time at Auschwitz, it would also be claimed that he lashed someone with 25 strikes of his whip, and that he gave out regular beatings, and that he shot prisoners randomly with his machine gun, and also that he encouraged dogs to be set on the prisoners. It would be at Bergen-Belsen that Josef Kramer would get his nickname of the Beast at. In December 1944, he was transferred from Auschwitz-Birkenau to Bergen-Belsen. The camp had originally been a temporary camp for those fleeing Germany, however had expanded throughout the Second World War. Belsen would not have gas chambers inside it, however the rule of Kramer was so brutal and horrific that he would receive the nickname the Beast of Belsen. Kramer claimed that when he came to the camp, there was not much of an issue with food, however as new prisoners were transported there, the situation regarding food seemed dire. At the time, the Allies would conduct air raids to bring the Third Reich to its knees, and with this, Belsen suffered greatly from a lack of supplies. Also, the weather affected the ability to get supplies quickly to the camp, but the main problem with supplies was caused by the overcrowding. The Red Army were advancing quickly towards Germany, and because of this, many of the prisoners in camps in the eastern occupied territories were moved to Belsen. Around 85,000 prisoners were transported in cattle cars or force march to Belsen. In July 1944, before Kramer was commandant, there would be 7,300 prisoners, but after there would be 60,000 by April 1945. With the sheer overcrowding and the German defeat appearing on the horizon, the administrative systems of the camp broke down, but Kramer would continue to try and rule. In March 1945, he would ask for help and resources, as at the time 250 to 300 inmates a day were dying from a horrendous typhus epidemic, which was running riot throughout the camp. Prisoners kept being drafted to Belsen, however the end for the camp was on the horizon. With the collapse of administration, and also with the war heading for a defeat for the Third Reich, many of the guards abandoned their duties and would flee the camp, leaving the inmates to fend for themselves. Kramer would refuse to leave the camp, and when Belsen was liberated by the British, he even took the British on a tour of the camp to inspect the horrific sights which greeted them. Huge piles of corpses and death surrounded them, and the scenes were incredibly desperate, with mass graves being filled in and full, with nowhere to bury those who had recently passed away from the conditions. The British would find barracks filled with prisoners, some too emaciated to even walk, and disease was a huge problem inside the camp still. Kramer, because of this, was then imprisoned and held at Hamlin Prison. He was placed on trial for his involvement in the war crimes, and during this, information would come out about how horrific the Beast of Belsen truly was. He would routinely just beat and kick prisoners who were too weak to work, would select those who were to be gassed, and would encourage guards to tear prisoners limb from limb. Kramer even allegedly kicked one woman to death during selections, and even starved a number of Russian inmates to death as they'd stolen bread. Kramer, also at Belsen days before liberation, would shoot and kill two prisoners who found some rotten potatoes that were lying on the ground, and his activities in Auschwitz would also come to light. For all of his cruelty, he was sentenced to death and was to be hanged at Hamlin Prison by Albert Pierpoint on the 13th of December 1945. Along with ten of his guards, the Beast of Belsen would be hanged. The executions began at 9.30am and were continued throughout the day until 4pm. First, a number of women, including Irma Grease, were executed, with Pierpoint and his assistant performing the executions. Josef Kramer would be imprisoned in a small cell in Hamlin Prison, and at the bottom of the row of cells would be the execution chamber, where Pierpoint would administer the justice. He would perform the executions in pairs, and at around 12.15pm, Kramer, along with Dr Fritz Klein, were fetched from their cells and brought forward to the execution chamber. A gallows with two nooses would have greeted the pair, and they made their way up to the scaffold to meet their maker. At 12.19pm, Josef Kramer and Dr Fritz Klein were both hanged simultaneously inside the chamber. They had been the first of the men to be executed after the women were killed. They were hanged using Pierpoint's methods, and then after death was confirmed by the assistant and the doctor, they were cut down. It's assumed that the bodies were then cremated, 
with the ashes being scattered in an unknown location. Josef Kramer seemed like a man who seemed to thrive inside the concentration camp system, and with leadership over the mass murder of innocents, he seemed to have found his purpose in life. He inflicted a huge degree of suffering and barbarism on thousands whilst in command of different camps, and he made dozens of thousands of people's lives much worse. He was a man who certainly through his horrific acts, definitely deserves the nickname, The Beast of Belson. Once again thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.